Okay, so we're going to try the live again with uh, Mariam on uh, Kuchina Povera of uh, Kashmir. And uh, I think as I was mentioning, uh, every cuisine has uh, a very, very open part of it, a very front-facing part of it. And, but there are many parts of the cuisine that uh, is not really talked about very much. It's the, the as Mariam says, the underbelly of it. There we go. Okay, this is perfect. Okay. There we are, Mariam. I'm, yes. I'm dressed up like an Eskimo. This is not like I'm not joining IS IS. Not right yet. <laughs> it's just very, very cold in Srinagar. So. Oh, and I was just thinking that, oh my God, it's breezy in Bombay and I'm chilling. But yeah, now you actually, uh, it makes me feel like, yeah, no, this is what cold actually is. Uh, so, so Mariam has told me that she doesn't want any fancy introduction, uh, which I think is fair because... An introduction to Mariam would last the whole of this episode, but uh, let me just say that she is a wonderful uh, food writer and author, uh, someone whose work you really need to follow. Uh, she's written this marvelous, marvelous book called uh, The Flavor of Spice. It's one of my favorite books on spice, not simply because uh, the very few books that actually capture the Indian experience of, of, of spice the way that Mariam does, but it's just a great book uh, on the ingredients. So, Mariam, thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, this evening. Today, we're going to be talking about something that uh, she, Mariam has been following very closely, and this is on Kashmiri food and Kashmiri cuisine. Um, and we're going to be talking about uh, Kuchina Povera, um, a concept that not everyone is familiar with. So, uh, Mariam, do you want to tell us a little bit about what Kuchina Povera means, and then we'll get into the cuisine? Absolutely. First, I'd just like to introduce myself. I am the wife of a Kashmiri. He is Muslim. He's Kashmiri. Uh, that's not why I'm wearing this lovely scarf and veil, etc., etc. I'm wearing woolen clothes because I'm dressed up and swaddled in a blanket, but I'm not going to show you my whole self on camera. Thank you very much. Uh, I have lived off and on in Kashmir uh, for 30 years. Before that, I was a freelance travel writer and photographer so I used to visit Kashmir but since 91 I've lived here as a Kashmiri housewife I speak Kashmiri um, so my experience is not that of a dilettante that I can promise you okay on there's nothing dilettantish about you Mariam that is for sure <laughs> <laughs> thank you so Kuchina Povera is a fancy word it's in italian it means the cuisine of poor people you can glorify it when it's written in it when it's spoken in italian when it's about the nuts and bolts and the paya and the siri and the like if you sort of start describing it in kashmiri or in hindi or urdu it will sort of sound less than felicitous and it might give offense which is hmm. why it's a nice way to just say it in Italian. It is like when you and I go to a restaurant, we eat a steak or we eat a lamb chop or we eat hmm. prime cuts of meat like the chicken breast. And that's not the prime cut, but anyway, it's supposed to be. Uh, we are basically talk, t uh, looking at the most expensive cut. But hmm. how about people who were not very well to do. Like a couple of generations ago, Kashmiri people in Kashmir were not well to do as we are now. We mm -hmm. may not think that we are well to do, but in comparison, like my own family, that is my, the family of my husband. They are my family after 30 years. You can't keep calling them in laws, in laws. So I just say my mother, my sister, my father, etc., etc., and everyone gets the picture. So we used to use, we means much before I had come into the family, of course. In the mm. 60s, up till the 70s, we used to use wood fire. We used to cook on the mm. second floor of our house in the old city uh, on wood fire. Then after that, we changed it to 
uh, uh, kerosene and then after that we changed it to electricity a small little heater which most kashmiri families still have and then now we mm. use we use gas means in our old city homestead we use gas and also there's always a uh, heater on throughout the day so, for uh, for cooking rice for making noon chai etc etc that's a standard so the uh, uh, what we've been cooking with has kind of defined our um status in life so when hmm. we used to cook with wood fire we used to eat offal etc and now that we've sort of grown up in the ladder now that we've climbed up the ladder we tend to to use like breast of the lamb and um, for for example tabak maas and that kind of thing i mean now we use prime cuts we buy prime cuts but there are my mother in law for example would love uh, to taste stuff that she used to taste when she was first married and there was not very much money mm-hmm. going around but in our generation like my husband and his siblings they don't have that much of uh, love or they don't reminisce that much of what we are talking about kuchina povera oh. the the uh, paya okay because it can be made into a very nice soup but other stuff mm. uh, is not uh, they don't really have very much uh, sentiment about it Okay. So what are what are the parts that we're actually talking about, uh, Maria? Okay. When we're talking about uh, cochina povera. Okay. So the first thing is the head, the entire okay. head. It's the. Uh, this is excuse us vegetarians. If there's anyone who's a shaka hari over here, they can please block it. I put that okay. warning out right at the start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. so this it's called kalamas in kashmiri that means head meat and if mm. kashmiri talks about it he'll in english he'll call it head meat mm. Mm. uh that is the the whole head that is prepared but that is bought by certain butchers the butcher that buys head meat will not buy the leg of lamb and he'll not buy the chest and he'll not buy the back it's a patty etc he won't mm. he will just deal with head meat and the other spare parts so he will okay. clean it because he knows how to debone it successfully because it's got so many bones that you can actually uh, harm yourself if you don't i mean if you don't debone it properly like if you ingest a bone like you're talking about very very fine bones which are very sharp in the in the skull so i mean you can actually like get some if it goes down your gullet you you've kind of had it so so just just to interrupt amaria so there are separate butchers who specialize yes. in in this is it okay yes okay and and they hmm. sold it they sold in varying parts of the city like the family butcher is everywhere you can say yeah. seena de do adha pav or der pav or whatever or give us um give me uh, i need to make tabak maas that's yeah. the family butcher if you say yeah. give me uh, the meat from the head like give me um, kalmas he he will probably get quite offended and said you know we don't keep this kind of thing of <laughs> just to establish that he is in sort of upper class sort of chap and not a down down the road kind of thing okay okay so so uh, uh, so there was head and then what else do we have okay now the head is also divided into three different parts then oh, okay. it's a very <clears throat> thick membrane which holds everything together that is called um keling in kashmiri i would not know what the english or hindi word is in kashmiri it's called keling and it's okay. uh it's hard not not hard it's it's gristle i suppose be it's a membrane that protects the head so now it okay. has to actually be quite tough because you don't want your head like you don't want to knock your head someone does this and like your head breaks into right right it's, it has to be quite hmm. tough uh that used to make a very delicious dish that my 
husband and my eldest sister in law still remember with great fondness my mother in law's uh, stepmother who's still alive used to make it and now she's become a little i mean too old for me to ask her can you make this and i won't be eating it because i don't think i would have a taste for it it's just to see the whole process so it seems like a lot of trouble to hmm. um, to ask a very very elderly lady who's nearing her 100 to say can you just make me something and i'll just look at it and i'll take lots of pictures and then i'll ask you for the recipe and then i'll say, okay bye i'm not going to eat all this i want to go home to some shakahari bhojan i don't think that's going to happen sure sure then the other thing okay. is the brain the brain is not mainstream but it's it's after mainstream it's one step down and the third yeah. thing is the meat in the head the me- actual meat okay uh um, um, like face etc etc you know that kind of thing okay uh, that is made that is because the pieces are fairly small it is very useful for making uh, for skewering it and serving as tikkas in fact oh. if you go to a tikka wala anywhere in the city you have to say mm. is this who who means is this kalmas and if he nods or looks same face it or something and if you don't want to eat kalmas you just walk on okay okay so uh, we're talking about sheep right we're not talking yes, about so goat i mean in, in kashmir it's goat. only okay okay so is there uh, enough of meat in say if, Uh, since we're talking about the head, uh, how much meat would you actually get, and how many people uh, would you actually be able to fit in? Yeah, and th- there is tongue. As we have someone, uh, Hafsa uh, Hamid, who says tongue too. But of, I'm sorry, I don't know the name because I'm just getting the the uh, <coughs> questions. Uh, hmm. We're talking about sheep, so I personally have not heard of sheep tongue. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. So I was asking, how much uh, meat would you get out of that? Would it be enough to fill? Uh, would you be able to make a, a a meal out of it, or do you need to mix it with other stuff? If you have, um, say, three or four he- uh, like kalmas, then you would probably be able to feed a family. I'm taking the average okay. family to be six members, because okay. so far the. Uh, concept of a, a nuclear family is kind of not non-existent but it's nowhere near the norm that it is elsewhere so there's okay. parents and a few i mean say two sons their spouses and a couple of children that can do okay okay so uh moving down the animal what, what are the other uh, other parts i'm presuming these are all organ meats really that we'll be talking yes, about yes all organ meats so i suppose there would be trachea and that kind of thing i personally have never heard of it i think i've not heard of it because as an english speaking person i know the term trachea but maybe a kashmiri speaking person who deals with meat would just call it Chishnor, which means lungs. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, Chishnor is um, that is considered like quite a delicacy. In fact, I was talking to a member of the family just this morning who said that uh, her father-in-law had bought a pair of Chishnor just last week, and they had cooked it. And she is not a man for organ meat, but. Uh, um, she also ate it it has to okay. be fried very well with an onion and then an onion and lots and lots of garlic because in kashmir we use garlic for taking away the uh, smell of something we call smell like natural smell of a natural mm. product like not drainage i mean that's an that's an odor but we call like smell of meat or smell of chicken or fish or some we call that shahalun So to okay. neutralize shahalun, we use a lot of garlic in the cooking. Shishnu, okay. yes, just Fish, food, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So um, after that, I think uh, things like heart and all of that are also uh, used. Um, 
I never heard of anyone eating heart personally. But what is used is that's lungs. That's yeah. we've talked about brain. We've talked about yeah. uh, head meat. I mean, that's a less than felicitous term, but yes, head meat. So head uh, meat would be the same as head cheese, uh, more or less. I think so. Okay. But hmm. there's, I mean, I can't find any um, parallel between cheese and head meat. Okay, no, I think that's just the the Western term that we the but the polite term. Cheese. Okay, I mean, but why call it cheese? Why not just call it rubber? I mean, it has a very rubbery taste. I, I have so not looked into the. I'm going to come to Chef. I'm going to come to Demon right away. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, I, I think we've got a lot of questions also coming up, so. I'm not going to interrupt, uh, Maryam. Uh, go ahead with everything that you've got to talk okay. about. Okay. So, uh, the least known of all these is kelling, because hmm. now kelling is, I think, not cooked at all. And if it is, it's cooked in a very like uh, the like really, really marginally. I mean, very sort of deprived uh, economic background people, etc. Hmm. Um. But that is supposed to be absolutely fabulous and a little rubbery. The whole part about all these organ meats is, besides brain, of course, everything is rubbery. Mm. So, mm -hmm. uh, lungs, and then after that comes demin, as someone just said. Demin is uh, a stomach. Okay. So stomach is the the way the stomach is. Um, like the way Uparwala made the stomach is that it's got villi on one side. Mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. a sort of like a rub. Uh, that's a something like a towel, toweling. In fact, I used to call it Tulia Dutch when I was <laughs> really married. That the Tulia Dutch means towel. I didn't know the real term. So you have to mm -hmm. put it in a bucket of hot water, boiling hot water, and just keep it with a little bit of baking soda. And after half an hour in the water is uh, less hot, then you sort of take it out, put it on a flat surface and begin scraping the villi the way you would scrape clothes. Okay. When washing them. And the villi comes off and then you've got a fairly smooth surface. You cut it the way you want. And there's a kind of a section in the stomach which is like a little bit hard and tough. It's like a line. And uh, mm. people who know, I don't, people who know and people who are connoisseurs of stomach cut it so that many, as many pieces as possible have this line in them to make it more chewy and slightly more prestigious. If Okay. I mean, because there's prestige even in this. So. Oh. Okay. Um, okay. Um, before we, so, yeah. Before we just go on, um, Prita asked about skin, and uh, skin if I don't when when. Know. Okay, okay. So then let's move on. I think we're going down the digestive track. So. Uh, then there is uh, after demin there is no, which is intestine. Now, I can't. I'm an English speaker. I have learned um, anatomy and physiology in school. So I don't know how to ask things like, is this a small intestine or large intestine? Because I, so far in 30 years, have not been able to get a, a reply to this question. Okay. So I really have no idea. Uh, no is also used in tabak, in uh, methi mass. Which I'll just come okay. to in a little bit. <clears throat> demin, demin, and no, that means stomach and uh, um, uh, in, in this absolutely fabulous methi mass, which is not gross at all. There's nobody hmm. in Kashmir who does not know, um, uh, who does not love methi mass. And it's yeah. a, uh, <clears throat> something that Vazas cook. Hmm. And the funny part is that when a vaza cooks it, it's one of the, the delicacies of the vazwan. Okay. 
and it is combined with dried methi dried fenugreek leaves and it just i mean the the flavor of one and the flavor of the other just get married so perfectly of course it requires a lot of cleaning and pre processing and that kind of thing but vasas have the way with all to do it because they bring a large army of cooks with them sure yeah so once all that is taken care of what you actually eat is like ambrosia i nobody tells uh, first time eaters in a vasavan hey hey you are eating this because nobody would guess what they're eating it's soft and absolutely delicious and it, the the um, texture is not gross at all okay. when a vasa cooks it if you and i cook it god knows <laughs> And uh, is this served to everyone at the Vasa or at the Vasa one, or is it only They're for only, a special? See, it's a very close <clears throat> society, if I may say so, with all due respect. In Kashmir, there are only Kashmiris, and ninety-eight percent or something, or ninety-nine percent would be Muslim. So there's hmm. nobody who'd say, "Me shaka hari hu aaj Tuesday." There's not that thing. There's not that limitation in Kashmir. So everyone sure. is served everything. and then okay. there are four people sitting at a plate so just in case for x y z reason i don't like something i can always push it to my neighbor side and say here you have this okay okay but i find hmm. it very uh, poetic justice that a vaza cooks demin and no but he cooks it in such a masterful way that everyone runs after it wow but uh, i mean if the, that is cochina povera what is it actually doing at uh, with a vaza and you know isn't that a contradiction in a sense um, <clears throat> i have a friend called haseeb drabu who people know him as a minister and as a banker etc i know him as a as a foodie i mean he is a mad mad foodie and he knows he has limitless information about food specific to this yeah. food and he also makes appams and every day he'll send me some picture of some appam that he's made in his and he's bought a chatti on amazon and he's gone and made appams and so that's what i know of has the asib that i know hmm. he says that the whole vazwan is in fact kuchina pogada because oh. when you take a carcass you don't waste any part of it hmm. you you don't use the lungs you don't use the paya and you don't use the head but the rest of it from nose to tail so to speak it's all used okay all used in a vasvan but it's used so successfully and so beautifully and so effortlessly that nobody says oh yucky here comes the so and so part that i never used to like all these years so let me not eat it there's nothing like that is ever said okay 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 um uh, i think we haven't talked about the liver and kidney the oh that uh, the kidney as my family member was explaining to me this morning exactly a perfect example of no wastage in a vasvan i don't know who said it but it's quite true the chef rahul uh, wali Okay, okay, yeah. Of course, he knows everything about Kashmir, being one himself. Oops, I've gone and done something. Sorry. No, you're fine. I'm you're fine. I'm holding this up with the air, so I have a little bit of trouble just keeping on holding it. Ah, no. Uh, sorry, you were asking. Uh, the liver and kidney. liver is not considered kuchina povera it is served in the regular butcher shops and lots of okay. people buy it uh and it's also cooked i mean if you buy the whole liver it's a little bit less expensive like right now in srinagar uh meat is mm. 600 rupees a kilo liver would possibly be wow. a little bit less than we are all crazy about meat we all like you guys need air and water so we can do without air we can do without water but we have to have meat <laughs> so and they know that and all the sheep come from the plains they come from rajasthan 
so it's a long okay. long trek and i mean when the bunny hall is closed there's lots of politics and geography and history and everything else let's not go there fair enough so okay uh the kidney every carcass has one pair of kidneys as everyone knows so that's two kidneys and both of them would probably weigh less than 100 grams so you would mm. buy two kidneys I, i mean you would not be able, they would not charge uh, separately oh gosh everyone joking <laughs> switch the remark <laughs> off on my side if you can don't want to offer you water <laughs> so um there are uh, only two kidneys in one carcass and the regular butcher in a a uh, residential area would probably sell about two carcasses on a normal day on an average that means four okay. kidneys so ha- what would he do with those four kidneys besides put them with the meat mm, he also mm, puts mm. a little bit of dem in with the meat like one piece of dem in with say half a kilo of meat dem in okay. is a uh, stomach and mm, usually mm. like say mom for example she's mm. uh, she tries to watch her diet so she she sticks to demen so we know that like the demen that is over there that is mom's nobody else is going to eat it okay and okay. i suppose that happens in a number of other families also so sure, so sure. yeah okay um i think you would mention about the tail as well about uh, sheep's tail uh is that that but that is more of a delicacy and not so much uh something that not goes at to all cucina povera not at all okay okay um well that there, there are the the naughty bits as well which we haven't really spoken about um are, are those used bits? yes yes there's kiri the that's the how Adult. the sheep feed their uh, yeah adults uh that i i'm not sure whether that's available in the regular butchers and i'm not sure mm. whether it's i don't know whether i should say it because there are quite a few kashmiris who joined this place but anyway the male uh, whatever it is naughty bits it's a very rude word in kashmiri so i'm going to <laughs> from using it um it's not spoken about by ladies and if okay. you have it i mean if you if someone buys it it's always the male of the fa- the eldest male of the family who goes out to buy uh you would not sort of advertise it hey guess what i've got guys and we're <laughs> going to have a party no it's just just fry this and you know pass it and then of course everyone gets the smell because it smells a little bit strong and lots of garlic has to be used so that's it Okay okay so um you know coming to some uh, uh, the flavoring and the the spices that are used you you've talked a lot about garlic uh, to cover up the the flavor um are there any particular sets of of spices that are used uh, in any of these things or is it the same uh, uh, across the board it's basically it's same across the board it's basically the same spices so i'll just mention them this lidar boidian marchwangan which means turmeric uh boidian is fennel fennel uh, powder everyone buys fennel powder i mean you can you go to any shop anywhere in kashmir and you'll be able to buy fennel powder i forgot what okay. fennel is called in in hindi um fennel is jeera shah jeera no 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 it's greenish yeah uh with someone no, no, no. someone on the chat will tell us it's called it's it's called boidian so it's soft 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 yes yes soft soft soft, soft. thank you so uh there's a uh, turmeric there's a uh, soft and there's red chili powder red chili powder of course kashmiri powder i mean kashmiri chilies uh and mm. then um there are couple of badi elaichi choti elaichi uh cinnamon and um cloves these are the four garam masalas that we play with a little bit more in one dish a little bit less in another but these are the tricks that we have to work around but 
uh, I mean, okay. this is the back. This is the paint box that we have for Kashmiri food, basically. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mariam, we t- uh, we've talked a lot about all of this, but uh, we didn't actually get to, to the topic, which is that it is a dying tradition that people are eating less of this uh, now. Uh, is it just because people have simply gone up the the economic ladder and they don't want to? Unfortunately, unfortunately, okay. like now, if you ask someone where if, someone who lives in a slightly older house, like say nineteen sixties, if you say where is your dan, they'll glare at you and say we don't have a dan. Okay. Uh, we cook on gas because now it's sort of infra dig to talk about the past. which is very sad okay okay so it's also in front of <clears throat> to say i love the naughty bits or i eat a lot of um demen and i don't much care for meat but give me demen any day and i love kalmas or i i i go out to so and so to jwala is a skewer guy i mean who does skewers on the barbecue because i love kalmas nobody ever talks like that it's always mm. let's go there and then you know why he's saying it because you have the same taste so you sort of hurry over there and if anyone asks you where do you go oh we just go in the bar to pick up some some onions <laughs> i mean you you try and sort of like you don't sort of talk about it openly basically okay okay and um uh... Are there fewer butchers now who are who are doing it, or uh, no. is or is no, it? No, because there, ha- there has to be the same. It's just that our class of society we don't do it, but other people have. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, poorer people they would do it. I mean, they would eat it because six hundred rupees a kilo. I mean, that's that's huge. So where and if you have to eat it every day. Then there mm-hmm. has to be an uh, there has to be a way out, and this is a nice way out. But then the okay. thing is that if suppose I have <clears throat> very uh, little money, and I can't, and I love meat, and I can't afford to to eat like sina and uh, leg and that kind of thing, so I subsist on uh, kalmas and stuff like that. Um. my tiny little children suppose i had tiny little children they would grow up with those tastes in, in, sure. implanted in their dna and when mm. they grow old like say 6 day plus they would kind of miss it or seek it out and in the interim maybe they have gone up the social ladder so then right huh. even if they are very like well to do and i'm no more then my children would tell their children let's go and have this you know we used to eat it when we were small and that kind of thing okay only thing okay. is that no com- it's as far as i know it's not prepared commercially but it's so there's my no, bet then there's no restaurant in uh, kashmir that no, i would actually be able would ever go there nobody would ever that kashmiri society being what it is nobody would want to say i'm going to eat kalmas today nobody would ever say that okay okay but Because i mean so now sir yeah no go on it's kind of admission that i got taste of the lower classes hmm hmm so now it's like purely uh, i mean i would i would imagine earlier uh when kashmir was a more of an agricultural society and uh where you know you when you slaughtered an animal you dare not waste anything but now uh when it's become maybe slightly more urbanized and definitely up the scale that uh it is now purely uh the poor who only have access to it, the poor who who can afford it yes okay okay and whoever and, kusum rora is correct on all counts okay oh. um wow so uh, you know i i think this is something that is fairly universal in a sense that it's not uh, i mean we are talking in the context of kashmir but i would uh, imagine that would be true there are, you would find elements of this in every cuisine in 
uh, Goan food. I know in Mangalorean food we uh, make uh, intestines and you know uh, the the other parts. I, I've never heard of uh, lungs, for in, uh, instance. But I, I'm absolutely if sure we that if has lungs, so what exactly would a butcher do with them? Yeah, yeah. Not true, and uh, I found this also the case of fish. Uh, I don't know if that, that's true uh, in Kashmir, but um, with when it comes to fish as well, uh, you know, uh, when I was running a restaurant a long time ago, uh, I used to buy a uh, gol, uh, which is a big fish. It's about like a fifteen or twenty kilos. So it's a about ten or fifteen fish and ten uh, fifteen foot long fish, and I used to wonder what they would do. With the skeleton, till one day I actually saw someone who very clearly was a uh, municipal sweeper picking it up, and and I asked, you know, what are they uh, doing with that? You know, there's nothing, and the fisherwoman explained that there is enough of meat on it for them, and once you actually cook the the bones through, it does become edible. That's how you, the French chef, famous French chefs, make stock, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And buya base was what? Buya base was all the rubbish fish that nobody else wanted to have. Uh, boiled yeah. and stuck on the docks itself. A little bit of saffron was put because it grew over there at that time. And they would just sit around the fire, warm their hands, and then after that, uh, uh, drink the soup. Never, ever, ever, ever imagining that rascais and all these fish would one day become. Unimaginably expensive because everyone wanted buya base. Right. Uh, just one last uh, question, uh, Maria. Uh, since you mentioned saffron, I I presume it's never used for for the in these kind of quiz, uh, dishes. It would kind of be a contradiction in terms, but actually, Kash I mean, well, okay, there are two things. One is that hardly any Kashmiri uses saffron for anything other than fidni. Which is made of uh, suji and for kahava. Uh, like okay. we keep the tiniest. We probably are the smallest users of saffron in the whole country. Okay. And the second thing is that it's not indicated in Vazwan because for Vaz, I mean, or it's not indicated for a dish which has which has so many spices and so much of garlic etc. going on that. Uh, a little pinch of saffron here or there will just get lost in it, okay. and it's okay. the it's the up close and personal, like you know, nose to tail kind of eating with very strong tastes. And I don't think that saffron would be uh, uh, it would be misplaced in that kind of cuisine. Sure, sure, exactly, uh, Mariam. Uh, this was such a Fantastic conversation. Uh, uh, we we spoken about this uh, a little earlier, you know, but in the ramp up to this. But just listening to you talk about all these things is uh, is really really educational. I'm glad uh, we had a chance uh, to kind of dig deep into uh, your knowledge. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking. Everyone said, "Oh Kashmir, oh Vazwan," but this is like the antithesis of Vazwan, and I'm so glad that you have given me an opportunity to hold forth on it. And I'm afraid we've overshot the mark by 15 minutes. So my apologies. No, no, that that's fine. I think when it's when it's a great conversation, nobody cares how long it's taking. And uh, I think we've had some great. Uh, I think a chat conversation also happening down below, and people following. Uh, you and kind of adding on to the richness of this conversation. Uh, so thank you, everyone, for participating, for uh, listening in, and uh, supplementing our our information. Um, uh, I had a great uh, chat, and I know Mariam also enjoyed herself. Um, so thank you, everyone, once again, and I will see you next Tuesday uh, at uh, six p.m. In the meantime, uh, stay safe, uh, stay well. Take care, Mariam. Thank you very much indeed, everyone, including Anmol, especially Anmol. Bye. Bye bye.